guys, welcome back to Part of My Imagination. My name's Jasmine, and today I'm going to be doing a late as fuck July wrap up. Okay, so like I said, this is a July wrap up. It's super late because I've been really busy and I just haven't had time to record. So I read a total of, I just counted and lost 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 books. Uh, that was a total of 4,986 pages. Woo, woo. I did listen to one audiobook, but I still added the page counts because technically I read the book, but I listened to it, but I still wanted my pages. So yeah anyways let's just get right into it okay so the first book that i read was the raven boys by maggie stiefvater i gave this book four stars i really enjoyed this book if you don't know what this book is about i'm granted everyone should know what this book is about but a lot of people were saying that they didn't know how to explain it and in a nutshell this book is about a girl named blue who has a family she comes from a family of gypsies now she's the only one that can't tell people's fortunes or like see anything about her life but from the time that she has forever known her family and everyone that has ever done a reading for her has said that the boy that she falls in love with if she kisses him he is going to die that is one of the main plots of the story now blue ends up meeting this boy or she meets a group of boys that go to this all boy school private school whatever you know they're rich or whatever like the stigma of like being rich and preppy and just like spoiled and she meets this boy named Gancy. he is a super very interesting character all the characters are really interesting there's a ton of plot twists that happen that you're like oh shit the next book that i read was we hunt the flame by hostel Faisal. obviously i gave this book five stars this is one of my favorite books of 2019 I will say it's at least in my top 10 favorite books of all time. So basically the main char character is Zahara and she is basically a huntress but no one ever calls her a huntress because it's kind of like looked down upon or it's frowned upon or for kind of forbidden for women to do anything that isn't meant as a woman role. And she is basically saving her family and her village because the land's dying and there is no food so she's going and hunting in this forest that nobody else can go in and she can and then you have another main character Nassar who is the Sultani's um, son and he is an assassin they call him the Prince of Prince of Death because literally if you get targeted to be killed or assassinated he's gonna be the one to, and if he's the one to do it you're gonna die so obviously he is meant to stop the hunter from getting the book that's going to bring magic back he doesn't know who it is and things happen they get put on this island and things start going crazy and my favorite character all tight ear is like my heart my soul my teddy bear the next book that i read was harry potter and the sorcerer of stones by jk rollins i gave this book what did i give this i gave this book four stars but really i gave it like 3.75 stars because yeah it was all right um obviously i'm not reading it when i should have read it so obviously i'm 27 years old how many times can i say obviously but yeah it was basically the movie <laughs> honestly the movie did really well on following the book um i really enjoyed it ron and freaking harry were like mean as shit to hermione and like hermione was kind of annoying so but i can i can take away from that the same way that i read the series of unfortunate events i can understand that this was meant for a younger audience so i might not the love for it that I have for that everyone else has for it isn't going to be the same but I really still enjoyed it um I'm looking forward to uh reading the next one all right the next book that I read was Sleeping Giants by Sylvian uh yeah Sylvian Nouveau I gave this book five stars it was so good it's sci-fi 
um, heavy science, like, yes, heavy science, and then it touches on, like, uh, like being a linguist, which I thought was really cool. Um, so basically this story is about this group of people that are in this, like, secret project. And basically the scientist that is the lead on this project, when she was a little girl, she had, like, fell in this ditch or whatever, and she fell on this large hand. And from that, it sparked her like mine or it sparked her love for science and she wanted to be a scientist and that's what happened and then later on in life when she became in like her 30s or whatever she got invited on to be the lead scientist to figure out what these body parts are because come to find out there were other parts then it wasn't just one this one so obviously sleeping giants uh it's a large giant now you get introduced to two other main characters that are um one is a pilot um, she's in the army, which I thought was really cool because, like, you know, has army. I'm in the army, you know, whatever. Um, but she is one of the ones that are is going to help um, try to get this robot to work. And then obviously there are other things that ensue. It's really really crazy. It's told in like a case file interview type thing, which I thought was really interesting. I read along and listened to the audiobook, and it was, the audiobook was really really good. I had like a full cast, so all the voices are different I really fucking enjoyed it the plot twist at the end was like oh, I can't wait to pick up the next one so I'm just gonna move along to the next book <laughs> the next book that I read was Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard I gave this book four four and a half four stars I really enjoyed this book um I'm sure everyone knows what the Red Queen is about I'm kind of behind on like some of these series but if you don't know what this book is about this book is basically about two groups of people there being reds um and basically the weaker form or whatever and then you have the silvers that are like the government or not government but what are they um the king the king and then his family or whatever now the main character whose name i can't think of right now she ends up having powers and she shouldn't have powers because she's a red and there she has no attachment to silver so she gets put into this like she is being a servant at this tournament and somehow gets caught up in it and that's how her powers come to flourish now she ends up the king and them end up making a story saying oh she's a lost silver yada 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 and things just go crazy from there and it's like wow i really really enjoyed this book um i have the next book on audiobook so i can't obviously so i have it up here so i can't wait to start glass sword and let me know if you've read it because it was really good the next book that I read was The Program by Susan Young, and I gave this book three stars, three and a half stars. Um, this book was, the concept was really interesting, and I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it for what it was, but I know that it was written a while ago, so like I can understand. Um, why the main character was annoying to me I've, I've been having that problem lately with books that were put out at least like eight to ten years ago the they come off very very YA they're meant for young adult and the main characters will annoy me but I understand that they were meant for someone that is younger than me so I don't judge the book off of that. But in the same sense, some of us are our adults. So if you ever wanted to read this book, the main character might annoy you. But basically this story is about um, this society where they have an epidemic of people and not just people, but teenagers committing suicide. So the United States and everyone around the world, but the United States basically wants to come up with this program where anytime someone starts showing signs of depression um, or anxiety or anything like that, they get sent to the program. Now the program basically is giving them medicine and freaking 
the medicine, I'm not going to tell you because that's kind of like the, the plot twist, but when they come out of the program, they aren't the same anymore. Yes, they're happy, but they have like a caregiver that's like, you know, trying to push them back to, to be normal, but they can't interact with their old friends or their, their old friends can't tell them about their past or like they get in trouble and they get sent to the program. Like it was crazy. It's a, such an interesting concept. So we have a main character who brother, whose brother ended up killing himself and he was best friends with her boyfriend. Now there's a group of three people and they're all just trying to keep each other motivated. Like they can't show any type of emotion. Like even their parents would report them if they started showing signs of depression. So because they're under the age of 18, they can get sent to the program. So they're just trying to keep each other motivated. And then obviously things happen and the main character gets sent to the program. Now, what irritated me was because in my mind, right, if I know they're going to say date me, instead of letting them sedate me with a needle and they're offering me the pill, I'm just going to take the pill, put it in my mouth, act like I swallowed it, and be done with it. But the main character, like, it never even clicked in her mind to be like, oh, okay, you know, I'm just going to fucking fight you and make you sedate me instead of just taking the pill and not taking the pill like she just did some dumb stuff and I was like that's just stupid why are you doing that you're just being difficult like next book that I read was Other Words for Home by Jasmine Warga this is a middle grade this story is about a girl who is a Muslim living in Syria and her brother is an activism for basically trying to fight against the government because he believes that what the government is doing is wrong um so war is starting to get heavy and her town is starting to be affected so the mom and her move in with her uncle in america and it just kind of tells the story of being a muslim coming to america um looking for um asylum essentially and it just tells her perspective of being Muslim and going to an American school, but living in a family where, you know, her uncle isn't really doing what, or not that he's not following Muslim culture, but, you know, he's married to a white woman. They have a child together and the daughter doesn't understand. So she'll say things and treat her cousin differently because like, obviously her cousin has a super thick, thick accent. She can kind of speak English but not the greatest and you know they're going to the same school but I thought it was a really 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 good story um like I said which I gave it four stars it was really good I honestly don't know why I didn't give it five stars but it was a really good story and I think that it like really opened up like um looking at one being mindful of other people's cultures and their situations because you never know um but also a lot of people have this misconception that people that are seeking us asylum are coming over here and just wanting to be american no like she wanted to go back home she wanted to go back to syria she wanted to see her dad she wanted to see her family uh her brother and everything and all her friends like her whole life was in syria but because of the um, like protests and stuff and the government and all this stuff, she couldn't, it wasn't safe for her to stay there anymore. But she wanted nothing to, but to go back. So like, and then it also touched on like, you know, being Muslim American and how that was different from being a, a Muslim from, you know, Middle Eastern countries. And it was just all around interesting and it was done really well. And this was a middle grade, so like, I feel like everyone should read this book um obviously I can't say if it was the proper representation but I learned um I learned a lot from it like I the next book that I read was The Cruel Prince by Holly Black I gave this book four stars <sighs> I really really enjoyed this book I'm not gonna tell you guys what The Cruel, the Cruel Prince is about because I feel like everybody knows what this book is about but I super enjoyed it like those plot twists I was like oh. the plot twist with the sisters I was like oh 
Damn. And then the plot twist at the end that what she did, I was like, damn. Cool. Yeah. I'm reading The Wicked King. It's not even on my August TBR, but I'm reading it because it popped up on my Libby app. So, like, that's all I'm going to say about that. And the next book that I finished was A Feast for Crows by George R. R. Martin. Um, excuse me. I, uh... What did I give this book? I gave this book four stars, but really I gave it like 3.5 stars. And the reason why I say that is because the only character that I really, really cared about in the book was Arya. And there wasn't much Arya. There was more like Sam, uh, Brienne, Jamie, Cersei. And I just didn't care. Like it felt like a filler book. It was also one of the short, it is one of the shortest books in the series. So I was just like, eh. But I had already started it. I only had like 200 pages left and I finally finished it uh, in the month of June, July. So that's all I'm going to say about that because read the series or watch the show. The next book that I read was Falling Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes. I gave this book five stars. I absolutely loved, loved, loved this book. I know I'm behind the curve, but I also haven't heard a lot of people talk about this series. But I really, 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 really love this book. This book is told in uh, multiple perspectives, not just one or two, but multiple perspectives. Um, it is obviously about this. There is magic in this world, um, but not really magic. So there's witches, um, and being a witch is basically looked down upon. And there's two different kingdoms where one, both of them are essentially cruel kings in their own sense but one of them is larger and one princess and 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 her dad's advisor go into the other kingdom because this kingdom one of the villages produces like this amazing wine the best wine in like the whole like kingdoms and something happens or there is an argument that happens between the advisor and one of the sons and the advisor ends up killing one of the sons in like broad daylight in public and everyone sees it. So the older brother is like, you're, I'm going to pay you back for this. They freaking run away, get on their ship and go back to the kingdom. And now this creates this one event has this kingdom over here. Like, oh no, fuck that shit. Y'all already been treating us like shit. Starving us. That's it. We've had enough. So they start planning this war against this one, where this one just thinks, oh, well, he was self-defense and blah, blah, blah. They don't see anything coming. But they got their own secrets. They got their own secrets. Characters are hating shit. People are dying. Unexpected romances. And you're just like, yes! It was so good. Y'all should read this if you haven't read it. And my reviews suck, but still read it. Yeah, and where's my last? Oh, okay. And the last book I read was Iron Gold by Pierce Brown. Clearly, I gave this book five stars because this was a reread for me. I literally finished the book five minutes before I showed up to the Pierce Pierce Brown uh, signing. I was also late. Yeah, and I met Lauren from uh, the novel Lush. And by met, I I mean like she was there. I was there. She was sitting over there. I was sitting over here. I seen her when I was going to ask a question and I said hello. But that's not what this book is about. Anyways, um, I'm not going to tell you what this book is about because it is a fourth in the Red Rising trilogy. Yes, I know trilogy. But he continued on after the three were already came out. So it's kind of a Sega. But yes, this book was so good. I'm not going to tell you about Red Rising. I'm just going to link my Red Rising review up here so that you can... Learn what Red Rising is about. It's one of my favorite series of all time. So you should definitely read this book. Like, read it. It's my brand. Clearly. Clearly. Anyways, those are all the books that I read for July. Um, if you read any of these books, let me know down in the description box. Really, I want to know if you've read Red Rising. Let's talk about it. If you read Fallen Kingdom, let's talk about it. If you read We Hunt the Flames, let's talk about it. 
But yes, yeah, so that's all that I have for you guys today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below. Subscribe if you aren't subscribed. If you want to, if you enjoy my content, that's cool. If you don't, just come back and say hey. And if you didn't like this video, like I always say at the end, I really don't give a fuck.